anywhere. It's up to you, New York, New York. <laughs> Ah, Little Italy, one of the most storied neighborhoods that helped mold the culture of this great city. One whose origins were simultaneously steeped in the past while rooted in the present. Now in the late 1800s, Italy saw massive droughts come through that wiped out most of the southern farmland, which forced young men to come to America, specifically New York, where they could make and send money back to their families. By the 19th century, the economic and political climate had disintegrated even worse, where fascism, the mafia, and conflict took control, and the entire families wanted to come up and permanently move to America. From 1860 to 1880, 68,000 Italians decided to move to New York and call this their home. By the Roaring Twenties, 380,000 Italians called New York City home, including my great-grandfather, Dan Carlone. Now since then, a lot has changed. See you again. How's everything been? Yeah, water would be great and uh, just espresso would be fantastic. Great, thank you so much. Jindan, salute, Dave. We're here in Little Italy, which always I love. One of my favorite neighborhoods brings me back to my roots as uh, the Carlone family, my great grandfather, came from Amalfi and settled here in New York City himself. So, you know, the number one thing, the number one event here in uh, in Little Italy is the Feast of San Gennaro, which if you haven't experienced, whether you're a native New Yorker or you're a tourist, you have to, have to, have to. It's in September, and it is the best sensory overload and, and just one of the happiest uh, gatherings of people that you'll ever be at. But before that, from Memorial Day to Labor Day, what they do is shut down Mulberry Street for the pedestrian mall, and which just opens it up for everyone to just be able to go, pop in, have a gelato, have an espresso, and just be able to kind of wander the streets similar to Europe and be able to just pop into places and really experience it. So uh, just really, really one of the most happy, just amazing parts of New York City uh, that stood the test of time and I'm excited to see it come back uh, really in full force. So, salute. Iconic destinations in Little Italy, Umberto's Clam House. We need some more wine, right? How have things been? How's the city picking up? Everything is going great. Fantastic. Slowly but surely we're coming back into business, and uh, hopefully the pandemic will be over soon, and everybody come to Little Italy. <laughs> Start spreading the news. Dun, 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 dun. I'm leaving today. It's up to you, New York. New uh, York. <laughs> oh, I love it. Alberto's Clam House. Come and see us. Fantastic, Tommy. Thank, you, thank so you so much. Good to see you guys. guys. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yep. While we touched on some of the history of this great neighborhood, as well as things that have changed a little bit, there's one thing that always remains the same, and that's the cannoli. So let's stop in at Cafe Palermo, home of the cannoli king. Come on. with the one and only Baby John DeLutro, the true cannoli king in New York. John, how are you? Good, Paul. How are you feeling, buddy? I'm, doing, I'm feeling pretty well, feeling pretty well. I appreciate you taking the time to sit down with us. Thank you. Tell us a little history about the store and how you truly became the king of cannolis. Well, honestly, I'm an old man today. Cafe Palermo, this August 15th, will be 48 years I'm here. Wow. I started on one side, and then I broke through five years later. And I became uh, the cannoli king. Uh, my customers named me the cannoli king. Okay. You know, I make all my pastries, but for some reason I do I make the best cannoli. All right. And the truth of the matter is, it is the best cannoli. I, I totally agree with that. And so, how, who made, where did you make your first cannoli? How did you learn how to make them? My Neapolitan grandmother made a cream, a great cream. Oh, okay. And she taught me how to make the cannoli cream. 
These shells I had a cousin of mine make because they were a little complicated for me in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Okay? So I actually make the cream, not the shell. Oh, okay. Okay? And I added a little secret to my cream later on in the years and uh, it gave it a different taste. Okay. Matter of fact, when I have one now, Mike, we have two large cannolis, please. New Year's Eve. I made 3,000 cannolis for the people on the street. Wow. And I was named number one cannoli king in New York City. Wow, that's an early uh, early morning cannoli make, too. But I but I eat them every day. I used to drink 20 espressos a day. <laughs> now I drink two a day. So you gotta watch out but for the I eat a couple of cannolis a day. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Let me try. And beer. They're delicious. Unbelievable. Before the virus, Cafe Palermo had lines seven days a week. Absolutely. The virus destroyed us, mm -hmm. like every other neighborhood in the world. Yep. And hopefully, a little at a time, it's going to come back. Right now, we're doing locals. Literally, literally cannot survive on locals. We appreciate them. We need locals. We cannot survive just for locals. Paid my rent all during the pandemic. Wow. Never missed one month. Wow, and there's a lot of people who can't say that. So. And how I paid it, they were good to me, and I went to my savings. Yeah. I'm many spending my did. retirement money. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Once that goes, there's no more cafe for him, can't pay the bills. Yeah. Wow. You know, so let's see what happens. Yeah. No, and it's a very, you know, very real uh, example of just how even, that, even the, you know, some of the most iconic destinations in New York just being completely wiped out. Can I have a bottle of wine, uh, please? And how do you feel about some of the new development, um, residential and stuff that's going on here? I like the new developments, but it's changed the face of Little Italy. People change, the neighborhood change, yep. the buildings are changing, the food is changing. But the cannolis stay the same. We're changing, and the cannolis, cannolis stay, stay the, the same. same. That's it. I think right. you're going to like this wine. I love it. Yeah. I don't drink a alcohol. I only drink wine. I'm and getting a, there. And, and a beer once in a while. Oh, Salud. Bless you. Yeah. Help. Here, let's get a little more, more bite, huh? I love it. Unbelievable. Okay. Baby John, thank you so much for the time. Well, thank you yeah, very much. God bless you. you. God bless. Hey, don't be a stranger. I will not. Come, come back and say hello once in a while. I will. And everyone watching, come to Cafe Palermo, cannolis, wine. And come and take a picture the with the king. <laughs> what an amazing time in one of my favorite neighborhoods, Little Italy. We touched on a little bit of the heritage of the neighborhood, as well as where we're at now and where the neighborhood's going. And man, did we get to meet some of the best characters Mulberry Street has to offer. Next time you're in New York, you have to come down and experience it yourself. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next time on Roaring Back. Thanks for stopping by, and if you like what you saw, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe on the YouTube channel, and make sure you don't miss another episode of Roaring Back.